generation of business models, and they are geared towards the community, as I said. So, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, madam. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased you're here. It's quite an honor to be here in the European Green Week. Et je vous remercie, Madame la Présidente, pour être ici avec nous pour uh, faciliter cet après-midi. Thank you for introducing us this afternoon. Very fascinating to negotiate 15 minutes to talk about what I do 80 hours a week. Um, so it's going to be a kind of a hurry up speech about. Uh, about green jobs, about a changing economy, and if you get lost somewhere or you doze away, uh, the message is very simple. We are in the middle of an economic transition, even not everybody is fully aware of this, and there are ample opportunities for new jobs in many, many domains, and the European Union is stimulating this development very much. I come from a city called Nijmegen, almost unpronounceable, but for those that are aware, uh, the Bridge Too Far film was, was, comes from there. But what is much more important, uh, this year, this year, yes, Nijmegen was uh, elected as uh, the European Green Capital, uh, which really says something about uh, the surrounding where I work, the university. I work at a relatively small university, 23,000 students, 5,000 colleagues. My message is relatively simple in this time and age. We live in a very complex period. You don't have to be too much attentive to all the news around you to understand this. And it means we are focusing an economy that changes quicker and becomes more complex. And that's why we have invented the word replexity. And the essence of this is we don't know where it's going, but it is a reality. And if we look at this reality across Europe, we see all kinds of officials uh, heading all kinds of debate about things that should change, uh, things that should focus on a different Europe, uh, uh, business is not sustainable enough. There are all kinds of debates. You can fill the room with documents stating uh, that it really should change. And we also have now new people to the fore uh, pronouncing all kinds of I would say, intriguing things. We, you could even, from these three people, quote all kinds of things. So, things are on the move, that's the message. Things are really on the move, and in that movement, we see Europe having the so-called five flagship initiatives, and it's important because that's a guiding document for the near future when it comes to the economy. And just remember, it's about smart growth, sustainable growth, and it is about inclusive growth. That leads to a whole series of programs, the Initiatives 2020, but most of you are either working in it or are very much aware. But this is the key that drives new sustainable development in Europe. I think that after studying the material that we collected over the last couple of weeks, uh, Europe is really busy trying to create an incredible amount of new jobs in all kinds of domains. We will not enter into the details, but later on you will see it's important to understand that this is not something that's on paper, but it is happening. And this happening can be focused on, can be translated to different uh, fields of work, be it waste prevention, legislation, uh, greener buildings, and what have you. In other words, we see a movement where green jobs are really emerging in different sectors. That is also due to the serious and substantial investments that can be found in the European Union, and without breaking it down into all kinds of details, that is serious, long-time money to make change happen. If all this is happening, then the question is, is it making a move? Is it heading somewhere? And this is uh, a recent 2016 Eurostat inventory about the movements of the European Union. And as you can see, without one more time going into details, some things move very well ahead, but other things still need a lot of time. This is also driven by the fact that we now have the Sustainable Development Goals. So all in all, if you look across Europe, it is a fantastic place to be, but it is also a place where a lot of things are happening. If we look at all those developments, the key message is basically we see a Europe in transition. Those jobs, those developments do not come about by incident. This transition has a character, and this transition is driven by three central concepts. 
One is called sustainability. The second one is inclusiveness or social engagement. And the third one, and it's a very important one because we're going to hear more about this, not only today, but in the near future, is called circularity. And the essence of what is happening in Europe is that we try to find ways to make this, to turn this into smart concepts. To elaborate, elaborate this idea slightly, you could say that we move away from a period of industrial transformation as we have known it into, on the one hand, inspecting and controlling and sustainifying business as usual, at the same time implementing sustainable development in businesses and at the same time discovering how we could, in this same vein, create a circular economy. In other words, this is not a simple movement of sustainifying things, but we see a Europe where we see different trends that need to be blended into smart economic concepts. Having said this, don't forget that we come from a linear economy that is dominant in our society, and we do not throw away this linear economy just like that. So we need to find ways to rebalance what we have towards the new concepts we are engaging in. The two central concepts that then appear is our sustainable and circular growth. This is also the key of the European Union. And the key of the circular economy is closing loops. Yeah? And the other concept that is important in this case is sustainifying the existing. And the essence here of my talk is that we can gain enormously by connecting the two. If we translate this into a simple image that is developed over the last years, we see on the upper end, we see the conventional economy as we know it. And this conventional economy is step by step becoming circular in different loops. And in general, we consider three different loops. The loop of repair, the loop of remanufacture, and the loop of upcycle and recycle. Now, the key is here in this picture that we see how to sustainify, on the one hand, this conventional economy, and on the other hand, to circularize this concept by creating new jobs and new business opportunity. In this field, there is a tremendous growth, a tremendous possibility for new bobs, be it in design, be it in resource management, be it in use and services, uh, be it in recycling and downcycling. And the key of those new jobs, if you try to get to the bare essence, is that it is all about material and asset performance. And many of the companies we will hear later today will talk about the same combined with this horrible word called servitization. So it's a matter of performance and service leading to what I call a new generation of business models, uh, but that goes too far to talk about what these new business models are all about. If we then try to translate this development into uh, the EU 2020 strategy, we see that there is almost in any domain a potential for green jobs, be it direct green jobs or indirect groups. So that is very promising. The question then, if this is the movement we're in, how can we help, how can we stimulate, how can we, I would say, move things up a little bit quicker? And because I think that given the subject we talk about, uh, this is important. And I think that if we, in the next 10 or 15 years, want to make progress, we need to adopt three different perspectives on change simultaneously. The first is that it is important that what we have in the conventional, in the linear economy, should be sustainified on a systematic way. We seem to be lose out of sight that this sustainification is not important anymore. And I think it's very crucial because the conventional part of our economy is a linear, is a linear uh, economy. That's step number one. Step number two is that we should adopt more uh, a an approach to making, to creating changes that what I, what I call is transformative. In other words, we should develop 
skills and competencies to make fundamental changes in our work and or networks or what have you. And finally, I think, but that takes a lot more time, I think we are heading towards a, a period where we have to focus more and invest more in system transitions to create a new economy. And like I said, I'm very sorry, I can't make this easier, but change is not a one-sided matter, it is a matter that has to be dealt with on different chessboards. Coming to the end of this 15 minutes, I would simply say that we are very happy, we should be very happy to be living in Europe where a lot of time and energy and money and strategies are invested in a sustainable future. The future is full of promises, but the future is also for the next 10 to 15 years, at least if not longer, complex and transitional. I would like to thank you for your attention. Professor Jonker, you have been excellent. I mean, you were actually saved about four minutes. I mean, you had an extra four minutes. Eleven minutes. Yes. Right, do I get a bonus? Well, in the end, yes. Okay. yes. In terms of questions. In terms of conclusions, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll think about that. But that was excellent timekeeping, and uh, I, I really um, thank you for your very altruistic time saving. Um, okay. Um, I'm very intrigued by what you were saying regarding translating um, the transition into this transformative phase into skills. Um, maybe we'd like to hear a little bit more about that um, and exactly what skills. But of course, um, this is the university, I would say, stroke practical side of things as well. I'm sure you're very much in touch with what's going on in practice and with the various industries and sectors. But I think we have to go on to a real story.